Today, I do not have my laptop because it's getting fixed. So I figured I would do a sit down video of the most asked questions I get through my email about Notion. Since I had my website up, these are the questions that I got generally all the time. So the first question I get is, this is the most popular one. It's how do I be more productive in Notion? So my advice for being productive in Notion is to understand that Notion is a tool. It isn't um, a thing or a system itself that's gonna make you more productive. It's a tool that can help you make the system. The system is something you're gonna make up or something you can grab from other influencers or other sort of systems wizards out there online that can teach you how to build the most efficient system for you. You grab that information and you build your system inside Notion using Notion as a tool. And then you may or may not become more productive from that system. And I say may or may not because these type of task management systems, um, these input output systems are very much only gonna work if it's catered towards the user. So you've got to customize it yourself. And you have to sort of have a preliminary understanding of Notion as a tool in order to customize it yourself. And there's a lot of trial and error involved with finding what's right for you. And I think that's pretty much what I did in Notion. When people ask me like how <laughs> about systems and what's the most efficient way of going about using Notion in that regard, and my answer is whatever works for you. I like, I don't know. Um, but here's some advice I can give for productivity. This is what I do. I don't really focus on the task management. I focus on reflection. So what I have is productivity table that catalogs what I did that day. And I'll tell myself, okay, my goal for today generally is to input this amount of information. So read X amount of pages, research this or that and then output X amount of things, which would be in the form of content creation or writing up drafts. If I've met my general goal for that day, I'll rate my productivity in a select property. I have a whole video on this that I'll link below. But basically, I'm using Notion as a reflection tool more than anything else. Like I have mood trackers and habit trackers, it's all trackers. So what I think a tracker does is it, it allows you to look at your weaknesses and your strengths. Say you track your productivity for every day for a month and you track what days of the week you're most productive or least productive, engage maybe why you are more or less productive on say Wednesdays. And you can say, well, I work Wednesday nights, I'm pretty exhausted. I'm not really motivated through the day. Well, then I wouldn't assign myself any tasks for Wednesday or try my best to not have anything to do on Wednesday because I know I'm not gonna be very productive anyway. So it's sort of just getting to know your own habits, your own strengths and weaknesses, know who you are as a working person um, so that your system can, can be catered towards you. That might not be the best advice that people wanna hear, but like that's all I got. So the next question I get is why not use other programs? Why are you building a habit tracker in Notion if there are habit tracking apps out there that can do this and then some? My answer to that is why not? <laughs> if Notion can do it, why would I have all these separate apps running at once? Why don't I just consolidate everything into this app that's wonderful to use and wonderful to look at and super reliable I think it's worth it in that case. Um, I think that's also a common mantra inside the Notion community is keeping everything in, in Notion. It's the all-in-one app, right? So I think the reason why people create these things inside Notion that could be created elsewhere is because they don't wanna move around to different apps. And it's fun, like it's fun to create these things 
inside of Notion and customize different elements of it that maybe you wouldn't be able to customize in these other apps. But yeah, that's pretty much all I got for that. I totally understand if you're like, kind of like, huh, why don't you just use this other app? But I guess it's just down to preference. So the next question I get is like, what's with the formulas? Why do they look so confusing? Uh, they seem cool. I'd like to use it, but I don't know where to start. I don't know what's going on. So my advice for this practically is to start with dates. Start figuring out date between, start figuring out date ranges, date adds, date subtract. And you can find all this by going into your formula cell and typing in different functions, or even just scrolling through the functions that Notion gives you and the little explanations next to them. But I definitely start with dates because they are the most practical. You're usually always gonna have some sort of date in your database, especially for task management. Try to figure out first, if you have a deadline, try to figure out date between now and deadline or date add three days to deadline. I would also look into the function contains and with contains also empty and test. This is sort of your true or false functions. If you want to grab, say, in one property, I want to see if this contains this element or this tag. That's what contains is going to do for you. Also, um, yeah, I just do contains and the date functions first. And if you can get down the if statements, if this, then that, then you're good. There is a reference I used in the beginning when I started using Notion for formulas. I don't know if the page still exists, but I'll link it down below if I can find it. It was really helpful for me and it, it laid everything out with examples and it was wonderful. I'm also thinking of making a course for the basic syntax of Notion formulas. Probably not anytime soon, but I am working on it. And with that question, I get a question asked to me, which is, do you code? Me personally, I don't program or anything. I come from Excel. So before Notion, I was in Excel all the time. Everything I do in Notion now, I did in Excel. When, no sho when, shown, <laughs> when Notion came around, I transferred everything over. So I already had an understanding of the formula syntax from Excel. And if you know Excel, even the basics of Excel formulas, you'll have an easier time with Notion formulas. So the last thing, uh, the last question I get is what do I use Notion for personally? And also what do I do? Like as a career, what do I do? And Okay, so what do I do? <laughs> I don't really use Notion for what I do because I am a waitress and a cleaning lady. I clean laundromats, so I don't really use Notion for that. However, I did use Notion when I was cleaning laundromats and it was the first time I used Notion. I tracked all the laundromats that were clean, that needed to get clean, the things inside of it that needed to get clean, and also the machines that were broken. And like I used it for like a good month and then I kind of stopped using it and then came back to it around November when I started my blog about Notion. Actually, the very first thing that caught my attention was gallery view. And I had this, I want to call it simulation in Excel that simulated something called, uh, how do I explain this? It's like a, a card dice game called Stratomatic Baseball. And I had like, if you don't know what it is, it's, it's a dice game that you can play with teams, historical baseball teams, and you can simulate actual games within an actual season. And each player card has actual statistics from that player, from that time. That's kind of the gist. So I transferred those cards into Excel, created a little dice, rolling uh, formula and kind of created my own little simulation to play with myself. I was an only child. This was like years and years ago, like high school, college. I still use that now, but that was something looking at gallery view and going, I could put like the pictures of the players 
and their stats in like cards. I certainly can't transfer the simulation, but I can at least do that. And that seems really cool. And then I went into November of that last year and started my Notion blog because I figured I was noodling in Notion for so long, I might as well just write some content on it. Um, and then I started transferring my history timelines that I also had in Excel into Notion and started creating this little history hub with all of my uh, events and, and timelines and dates by country. And I'd have a, I have a little, I like, like as if it was in the past, I still have this. I have a little atlas like database with little maps and like timelines and events that connect to like people cards and it's a whole thing. I also connect that to like my family tree. So Notion for me is all hobbies. Like I, I just use it for hobbies. I also use it for um, my content calendar. Like I, I don't really use it for anything else. And I feel like people assume that all of the, the content I'm making, all of the like templates I make are in my personal workspace. Some of them are for a little while and then I kind of like neglect them and put them to the side. So no, I don't use every single thing that I put out there. Um, but yeah, so that's how I use it for hobbies and also for writing. I, I do free writing in there. I'm trying to get better at my narrative writing. I'm not super great at it. So I try to free write at least once a day for 25 minutes and have a little database for that. So I'm gonna go back to tutorials, don't worry, once my computer is fixed. I'm actually going to be making a content calendar planner of sorts that I made this morning um, that I think is really cool with a, sort of a different approach to recurring tasks. And yeah, I'll see you when, when I put that out.